The other day I was sitting around leisurely enjoying my piece of the Gemini 2 heat shield when I noticed something kind of weird about the picture of the launch vehicle. There are holes in the Titan 2's fuselage. What? That's what we're looking at today on Vintage Space. When you think of a rocket, you generally think of something that is a firm structure that can do something like launch a payload off the planet. And when you think of something that has to launch a payload, you think of that something being firm and strong and not full of holes, at least not in the exterior. You'd think that the rocket's body would be solid. Well, that's apparently not the case with the Titan II. You can see in these pictures of Gemini launches that there are holes in the rocket, roughly two-thirds of the way up. And I'm pretty sure that I've never seen any holes in the body of a Saturn V or in one of the Redstones or Atlases that launched the Mercury program. So what exactly are these holes in the body of the Titan II that launched the Gemini program? The answer comes down to how the Titan II went through staging. All multi-stage rockets have stages built into their launch sequences. This just means that the first stage is at the bottom, the second stage is on top of that, and a third and maybe a fourth is on top of that. The stages fire in sequence, such that the payload is gaining more velocity as every stage fires. The first stage will fire, and after it cuts out, the second stage will fire, increasing the velocity of the payload. I discussed how the Saturn V went through staging in this video right here, and in that video I mentioned that there are ullage motors on the stages, such that when the first stage cut out, ullage motors fired to gain distance between the spent first stage and the second stage, such that there was enough space for the rocket exhaust when the second stage ignited. This is typical of a lot of rockets, including the Titan I, the first version of the Titan missile. But the Titan I didn't launch the Gemini program, the Titan II did. And the Titan II had a lot of differences over the Titan I, including how the rocket went through staging. The Titan II was a two-stage missile, and in this case, the second stage was designed to ignite while the second stage was still attached to the first stage. That meant that all of the hot exhaust and the gases coming from the second stage engine would be inside the fuselage. It was obvious that this would lead to a rupture and some catastrophic event at launch, and that was a very bad day for everyone involved. To prevent this buildup of hot gases inside the rocket, the Titan II had blast ports, basically 16 holes around the interstage, such that the hot gases from when the second stage ignited would escape outside of the fuselage and not rip the entire thing to shreds. So those holes you see in the Titan II's fuselage are exhaust ports or blast ports, specifically engineered holes such that the hot gases could escape the rocket safely without ripping it apart and blowing it up. I've got more information on the decision to use the Titan II for the Gemini program as well as the blast ports that are characteristic of the Titan II over on my latest blog post at Vintage Space over on Popular Science, so definitely check that out if you still have more questions. I love the Saturn V. What space nerd doesn't love the Saturn V? But there's something about the sleek lines of that Gemini Titan launch vehicle that's just so awesome watching it rise on clear flames off the launch pad. What is your favorite rocket to watch launch, vintage or modern? Let me know in the comments below, and of course if you have other questions about the Titan II, the Gemini program, or anything else Apollo era and spaceflight, and of course anything you would like to see covered in future episodes. Be sure to follow me on Twitter or on Instagram for daily content, and with new videos going up every Friday and occasionally on Tuesdays. Subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.